The NRL trials are clearly one of the most confusing time periods in the space of the rugby league calendar. Where some people claim it's just a way that players can get strength up and potentially lose players due to injury for no real reason, but others see it as a telltale sign about what is going to proceed in the regular season. So we will investigate this. Are the NRL trials misleading or misunderstood? So how can these trials be misleading? Picture this. It's 2018 and you are a Knights fan. Your team is coming off one of the worst seasons any team has suffered in the NRL with not one, not two, but three straight wooden spoons. And in a trial match in 2018, you take on the Melbourne Storm, who not only are a good team, but are the defending premiers after absolutely demolishing the North Queensland Cowboys in the most one-sided grand final of all time. But then, all of a sudden, you beat them. The Newcastle Knights end up beating them 26-22. And then, the false hope sets in. You start thinking that you're definitely not coming last this year, and then few of them dare to even say that they were going to make the finals this year. What happens? Your team comes 11th. I mean, in fairness, a lot better than 16th and getting a fourth straight wooden spoon, but the momentum of everyone thinking that we're actually going to do something this year was a clear drinking of the Kool-Aid that is the NRL Trials. And there is actually another story on where this happens the other way around. As Rugby League History comments on my NRL Trials Reminder video, he states, I remember in 2019 we played a trial game against the Mounties. We put out a full strength side and lost, but come the proper season, they finished fifth. And this is also the season where in the first round of the finals, Parramatta raw dogged Brisbane. So it's a very weird situation in this. It looks can definitely be deceiving when it comes to the Trials. Your team could go really well and win two out of two games and and basically everybody drinks the Kool-Aid and think you're going to have a good season and then you get absolutely raw dogged by something happening where star players could get injured. Which definitely can happen, so I don't think the trials in this case should be looked as accordingly. And not to mention the amount of times that players have been taken out because of the trials. I mean, mainly against... Canberra had about three players taken off the field with injuries, Marty Tapao being one of them. So if we were to actually go off the results of the trials, who would be winning? Surely nobody made a whole ladder about it. So here's the ladder I made. So as we see here, this is the ladder of all of the teams. So according to the two games that were played, the top eight should look like this. With the North Queensland Cowboys on top, Canberra Raiders in second, and St. George Illawarra in third. Then you have Parramatta, Manly, the Warriors, the Storm, and the Sharks. And interestingly, you have the Sydney Roosters coming dead last. So, should this mean that all the teams that finished in the top four should buy grand final tickets? Uh, probably not, because as we've just discussed in this misleading section on how the trials can be a bit misleading. But how can it be seen that it could be misunderstood? When it comes to majority of the 2022 NRL season predictions, ladder predictions, whatever you want to call it, there has been one quite shocking, consistent prediction that a lot of people have made. And that comes with the wooden spoon. And a lot of people, and I will put myself on there as well, have put the West Tigers coming last. Whether it be the amount of chaos that came across during last year's season, especially with the whole Tales from Tiger Town series, and some of the players ending up uh, leaving the club, a lot of people just do not have a lot of faith in them. But I will say that the trials game that they played against the Sydney Roosters could say a lot about the Tigers in which how they will go this season. I will say myself, the reason why I put the West Tigers in last place is because with the amount of players that have left, I don't think the quality at the time that they had brought in was going to be good enough to replace them. 
and they had a very chaotic back behind the scenes scenario which also played the likes of the Canberra Raiders last year with the whole Joseph Tarpany, Ricky Stewart and Tarpany's wife situation. But recently I see a lot of positives coming out of the West Tigers camp. Now one of the big signings they have made ever since I made my predictions video is the signing of Stafford Toa from the Newcastle Knights. Stafford Toa for the Knights, he was definitely a good player but kind of lost in the mix when it came to the other players. So what I feel like this is going to do with him is it's actually going to push him as being one of the front players for the Tigers and hopefully get a few tries going. They also got the signing of Tyrone Peachy, who which I feel is probably one of the most underrated players in the NRL. Like I know people go on about his inconsistency and stuff like that, but when he's on, he's on. He was so good for the Titans in this latter part of the early bit of the season. I was even calling for Tyrone Peachy to get a state of origin call up for New South Wales. But I do feel that the performance that they did against the Roosters, especially in the pouring wet, people could have said, oh, it's only a trial. The Roosters didn't field a good enough team. But I do feel that especially, like, led by Luke Brooks, who, in my personal opinion, along with Daly Cherry Evans, are the two players that get the most amount of hate, and I have no understanding why. I do feel that this Tigers team can do well. I'm not saying they're going to make the finals because, again, I don't think they have a good enough team to make it into the finals, but I definitely can feel they're going to do a lot better than how they have recently have been touted as. But I do feel in the end as well, Luke Brooks actually staying at the Tigers was the best decision because I know there was a lot of rumours about him being picked up to go to Newcastle to fix Newcastle's everlasting halfback problem, which has been a thing since Andrew Johns retired. But I do feel that the Tigers will definitely do some well and the seeds of what is going to happen and hopefully with this rebuild over the next couple of years can definitely work for the Tigers in the future. Another team that we can definitely see has multitudely improved from their performances in the NRL trials is the Cronulla Sharks. Recently, over the last couple of years, I've put the Sharks in the bundle of teams that try to push for the final two spots. But their performance against the Canary Bulldogs really put a th thing saying they, I believe that they're actually a shout to make the finals. So if you see this is my predictions video, if I was to make honestly one change, I would probably replace the Titans in the finals with the Cronulla Sharks. Nico Hines is going to go down as arguably the best signing Cronulla has made bloody since I can probably since Gallon, I don't know, but it's a very, very good signs there for the Cronulla Sharks. You got Ronaldo Molotalo as well. There's a good young players in there. You got William Kennedy going all right as well at fullback. I genuinely feel there's a lot of positives for the Cronulla Sharks, and that is also another example as to why the NRL trials are kind of misunderstood when the argument of it's just a trial match gets thrown around. So in conclusion, would I rather say that the NRL trials are misleading or misunderstood? Personally, it's probably in the middle. There is good arguments proving that it is a misleading figure, but there's also good arguments that it isn't a misleading figure. So what will happen in results from these trials as we go into the regular season? Well, I guess we just have to find out. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I do want to say and talk about obviously what has recently happened in the Queensland area, especially in northern New South Wales with this whole flooding situation. Of course, one of our fellow Rugby League uh, YouTube creators, Nick from Australia, uh, recently lost his house in this whole flooding situation. So there's going to be an event on Saturday starting at 3 p.m. on the Sam Revel channel. It is a nine-hour fundraising stream for for this for the Lismore floods. Uh, the, basically, it's it's all for a good cause. Half the money is going to go to help. Nick from Australia and the other half is going to go to a trusted food bank to really help the people out here. I'm probably am going to be making an appearance at around 9pm ish so yes yeah, so I, I want to be a part of it. The links and everything, the link to the stream and the link to the, don to the donation of the GoFundMe is in the description below. I also want to make a pledge that for every stream that I do 
uh, for the rest of March. Any money that gets raised, ever donated straight to me, will 100% be going towards this fund. So yeah, hope everybody can join that and give as much as you can to help a good cause. Thank you guys.